Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the NRG series Pioneer 10K here in Indianapolis. My name is Will Hall, better known on the internet as the Will Hall EXP. That man to my left, that is Mason Clark, and we're bringing you the announcement of who managed to make it into the top eight. We started with 227 players. They've been battling out all day in nine rounds of action, but we've got it. We've got our final eight players. Now we need to know who is going to be the one walking away with the trophy, with the invite to the end of year player tournament. But there's a lot of magic to be happening before then, three rounds of it. So let's get into who is in our top eight and what decks they are playing. This is it on your screen. Start breaking it down for me, Mason. Yeah, so we have Hunter versus Alex. That, that's our number one, our number eight seed. That's the match we're going to start with today. Uh, Hunter is going to be on the play with Cool Midrange versus Bant Auras. Honestly, this matchup is going to be kind of close. The Bant Auras deck really overwhelms the Gruel deck, but we sort of saw this before. Sometimes the Bant Auras deck mulligans a lot, kind of falls on its own face. Definitely kind of favored Bant, but Gruel being on the play of the Lanor Elf deck, hard to underestimate. Will Krausik versus Benjamin Ungar, two of our players who are very much at large when it comes to to the end of the year players championship both of these players are hoping that whoever uh wins this match wins the whole tournament because that will open up another slot for them here a little unfortunate if you're one of those players wanting to make it but Afghan grease fang versus is it phoenix benjamin favored there on is it phoenix we're gonna have charles who we saw in career fires beat Derek davis looks like Derek did not make top eight did unfortunately miss out so I mean, versus michael burnett on is it phoenix that actually can get a little weird, kind of depends on sideboard cards, but for the most part, Is It Phoenix should be favored in the post-board games. Then we have Jonathan Hobbs versus Piper Pal. Actually, a finals rerun from last year. These two players met in the finals of an NRG, and Piper came out victorious. Honestly, this Rona Luka combo deck is so new. My heuristics are that Jonathan is probably a slight favorite because Rakdos is good at breaking decks apart, but no guarantees. This part of the tournament is open deckless going forward, Jonathan. So all the players are going to know what the opponent is doing, what they're on. Yeah, I was about to say, we have had closed decklist all throughout today through nine rounds of Pioneer, but now we're in the top eight. Now it is open decklist. You get to see the exact 75 or 95 your uh, opponent brings. So it really helps when you say, as you're playing these sort of Rakdos decks, when you know, we've know got all the hand disruption and the really good transitional cyborgs. But let's have a look at our main feature match and what the deck they brought. So we're going to start off on a Gruel mid-range from Hunter. And an absolute tear today with this deck. This is the one that top eight at the RC here in Europe, and it's going up to the top eight of the NRG series. Any key cards sticking out from here uh, for you here? Names the ones that have just been printed in the latest set. I mean, yeah, the Huntsman's Redemption has been a really cool addition to this deck. Not going to be probably super impactful with combination with the Crow and War, like we saw in the Swiss against Jonathan Hobbs, where we are Crow and War on the one turn, and then we Huntsman Redemption to sacrifice the creature on the next. Um, that combo is going to be a little hard against Hexproof creatures, but in general, this you're going to want to see Elf into three drop into a lot of pressure. And Vildaren, Thrill Seeker to throw damage at the opponent. It's going to be a big part of the game plan here. Okay, and over on the other side, let's have a little look. See at this Bant's Auras deck. Obviously, one of my good friends, Benson Henderson, uh, Manson, sorry, not Henson, that's a football player. Ben Manson playing uh, this deck to some big top finishes. Any key cards stick out to you here? Any new surprises, or is this just you know a lot of the good the good stuff doing it well? Basically, the good stuff doing it well. The things you're going to pay attention to are the staggering insights. That's going to give a lifelink to the creature. So when we make them really big, it's going to be much harder for the race to happen here for Hunter. So, you know, for the most part, both players are going to be trying to just do their own thing in race where Alex is harder to interact with and has lifelink. So the race is going to probably favor him a little bit. But pound for pound, Hunter's cards are stronger and is on the play with a Lanor Elf deck, which means we can have much faster starts of Alex has to, you know, maybe keep a two drop hex proof her hand might be too slow and barely lose the race yeah we've seen him pull out every single game we've had him on camera every single game he's had that turn one elf and always had a really powerful turn free play where it just goes far and beyond his opponent being able to kind of catch up with it i believe the players are just finishing up the shuffling so we're only moments away from kicking off this top eight you see here remember i'm pretty sure we've had every single one of these eight players in our feature match at some point over the nine rounds of pioneer we've played yeah so how many different decks we've got i didn't actually count that up is that eight so different decks six different decks there are two is it phoenix players yep those 
those pesky Phoenix players, they get in everywhere. But we are going to get look at this opening seven. Do we have a keep here from Jones? That is a deck that's going to be more prone to mulliganing, but it looks like we're going to have a keep here. It's going to be Hunt on the right of your screen, Mulligan. When we did have an interview with him, he did say he mulligans aggressively for that turn one elf. So maybe that's what he's uh, he's digging for right now. Yep. One thing to keep in mind, by the way, is, you know, I mentioned before Hunter's, some of his more expensive cards are not going to be as impactful like the Crone War. That might not actually be true. If Alex, you know, keeps a light pause hand, that could open us up to getting a Crow and Dord and just, you know, blown out. Um, that's the only thing that's going to line up with in the entire deck, but it is something. Hunter look, potentially going down to five cards here. He did say he would happily go down to five cards to get a Toe and Elf, and that was the last card there off the top. And Elf is, are we going to see it on the play now? Yes, we are. That's the jewel we're after. St shocking in this stomping grounds. Top eight off to the races, ladies and gentlemen. Who do you have in this matchup? Do you have Ban Auras? Hit a one in the chat. Or do you have a Gruel mid-range? I want to see the twos in the chat as both players starting off with their most powerful one drops. This is exactly what you were speaking about, Mason. Turn three play, super impactful. Yep, Hunt and Redemption, only making a 3-3, but still pretty good here. Just three me a 3-3, that's going to be hit you for five on turn four, not bad. Especially, we keep, we got the ability to two up next turn. Is there anything that we, you know, is going to help us in this race, really swing it or be super impactful? Do we want to get something like a Thrill Seeker or a Storm Seeker or Bone Crusher? Is there anything that we really want to be hitting, uh, finding here? Yeah, we might like float a mana off our elf because we might have enough lands and we might search like a storm seeker so we give haste to everything to keep the race going. That's gonna be the biggest thing, just because uh we are in a racing situation. We see Griffin's boon and chorus obsession, curious obsession coming down, uh making that scout not only have flying, but also when it deals combat damage, we get to draw a card. So that was a nice swift four points of damage. Uh yeah, four points of damage coming across. Yep. We do see Voldaire and Thrill Seeker as the grab. So maybe we already have Storm Seeker in our deck, but we might also want Thrill Seeker just to get put extra counters to this beast and get, you know, more damage in. Yeah, because remember, two creatures next turn do get plus two, plus two, and trample. So that's a lot of damage coming across, especially when you can uh, start throwing them next turn. But here comes another beast onto the battlefield. Three points of damage coming across. So we are, we are, we're straight up racing. Both players are racing here. But do we have a life link on the left of your screen here for Jones? That, I feel, could be the deal breaker of this matchup in the time. Yeah. If we don't have the life link, we need something like a Thural Armor or all that glitter. We have the evasive thing that can draw cards. That's nice, but our opponent isn't giving us time to draw. And we do have the Staggered Insight in hand. We also have an all that glitters, which is an interesting moment. You know, we can play Staggered Insight. We're going to gain, uh, I believe it would just be three, I'm sorry, four life here. Not nothing, but not the most in the world. Uh, you also will draw two cards instead of one. So you maybe make your land drops. You might even be able to play like a land and a Glade Cover Scout to chump block. But if you play all that glitters, you're going to get a much more damage in this turn, an additional plus three, plus three. So that is a way we have to start doing the math of who's going to win this race because Alex knows there's nothing besides Boseju in the main deck, which is a two-up for Hunter to stop this race. Yeah, and going through the math here, you know, okay, can I attack by attack and this happens? Okay, you're going to play. I know you got the Seeker in hand. You know two of your creatures are going to get plus two, plus two and trample. How is this going to work out? Looks like we're going to go with a fight ability here. Again, a lot of one ofs in this deck because we can go get them from the light pause. This is the Blessing coming down, giving it plus O, plus two and a fight, getting the token off the battlefield. I quite like this, right? Like, you know, with the... Um, the war coming off next turn, it's only going to have one target to give plus two, plus seven trample, not two with the, uh, yeah. sorry, the Huntsman. Yeah, I like this. Also, just like, if you think lifelink is how it's going to race, then like just in the battle thing off the battlefield matters too, because now if we go land next turn, we have all that glitters plus staggering insight, which, you know, we're sort of setting up here, which means we're going to have a huge punch turn because right now it's four, but if we put in all that glitters on, it's going to be plus four, plus four in the next turn. That puts us to eight. Then another power enchantment of Sagar Insight is going to give plus two, plus two between the glitters and that, and that will be lethal here. So Hunter has to deal 15 damage this turn or have a Besaju for when the uh, aura is coming up. Okay, Saga to Graveyard, five damage to come across. So not lethal this turn. I think we're in, we're in stay alive mode. How can we do it? Remember, Hunter on a mole to five. 
passing the turn back, representing the Spasagio, I imagine. Yeah, whether he has it or not, he is a faking it till he makes it moment. And this is kind of the awkward part and why Alex's place last turn was so good, like you mentioned. By killing the beast, we made it so Besager is a lot less impactful because the clock on us is much smaller. And now that means if we go staggering inside all that glitters this turn and they besage you, let's say the all that glitters, well, we're still just going to gain four life, which is more damage than they're doing, draw two cards, and we're just basically in the same spot that we were the turn before, but up a damage and they're down a racing part. So and here it is plus one, plus one life. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is uh, a lot of damage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going to add it up. I, 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 potentially <laughs> lethal. But this is, is exactly it, lethal, I believe. It's going to be a big swing, a lot of life. Do we have a Besaju on the other side of the battlefield? Two mana, Besaju. Interesting. Get, get yes. the life link out of here. Yeah, so life link, you know, ideally would give us a way to race. We're at eleven, which is funny because with the Valdarian Thrill Seeker, we know is in hand with Hunter. I think Hunter actually is lethal because Alex didn't get a chump blocker. We can play Voldaren Thrill Seeker plus two plus two the beast plus two plus two from the saga. That's four or seven. We fling it at the opponent. That's fourteen. We just need an untapped land here. Yeah, one untapped land away from st potentially stealing this game for Hunter or playing it masterfully, depending on who you ask. That's an untap. Free map. Do we have it? Remember, land. on a mode of five, every card matters right now. Yeah, give it plus two. That's the easy bit. Yeah. It's not moving. I've seen people move faster when they have lethal. Let's put it that way. Seven. At you. Drop you to four. to four. Is there a land? Yeah, you have to wonder if... Yeah, Hunter's no. sacrificing the elf a little early this game. Cost him there. He's played so tight. He still has game two and three to win the match. Yeah, on the play there as well. We know that how much that kind of affects the Pioneer mm -hmm. format. But, you know, unfortunately there, the Mold of Five really struggled if there could have been that extra land that we needed. But it is open deck list in the top eight. So let's get the deck list on the screen for you all to have a little look. See, we're going to start off on the Hunter's side. A lot of different options. You can find their deck list in chat as well. If you go, I believe it's like exclamation mark deck or something, it will come up. You can all have a little look see on Millie as well. So Mason, what do you like in this sideboard? So there's a couple of cards here. Cindervines is one that you could bring in that will let you blow up one of the enchantments. Also sort of ping your opponent a little bit. Uh, Rending Volley is another thing you could bring in for the light pause. There isn't much uh, removal or things you have that can interact in that department, but that is one. Uh, Gruel Charm, I believe, isn't going to do much in this matchup, but it does deal three to each creature with flying. So once again, if you're trying to maybe you know, uh, get around the Hexproof. That's something you could do. I'm not a huge fan. And Tranquil Philbrack is a way to blow up an enchantment. Uh, all in all, not a lot of things here for Hunter. And this is a common thing that happens with the Bant deck. Bant deck, very, very strong if your opponent can't interact. Most people choose not to interact. And the reason we don't see a crush all the time is it has a lot of disparate draws, right? Its ability to play a consistent game is not very high, has a high fail rate, and has to mulligan a lot. And the other decks in Pioneer are so fast. We saw how in this matchup, you know, despite this being a good matchup, had Hunter just had one more land, would have lost. So, you know, not a lot of cards here. We might just see these come in. Now, I'm going to imagine the Acrolin Wars coming out for any of those four cards that can interact. My guess is it's going to be the Tranquil Thrillback, the Cinder Vines, and maybe a uh, Rending Volley for Hazaret. I'm oh, sorry, for uh, Light Balls. Let's move across to the Ban Ores list and have a look, see what's going on in here. Um, you know, managed to break serve there. I feel like the Mulligan really was the the big player in that matchup. But now we've got to try and find, win one of these last two games because, of course, we are up one game. What cards in the sideboard here do you like bringing in, if any at all? Um, in this matchup, I'm sorry, from this sideboard in the matchup, there aren't a ton of things that I like. So the Rune of Sustenance, very good. We saw how Lifelink would be so important in that game. Having just another one you can search up uh, and having your deck in that consistency is nice. Portable Hole is something we could see here as a way to answer the Llanor Elves. Uh, we also saw that, you know, Alexander likes Slip Out the Back against Grease Fang, which was a card I was a little surprised by. But under that same logic of maybe I need to win the race, we might see that come out as a way to protect our creatures and uh, remove theirs from combat for a turn. And when it's a race like that, you know, that last turn, if you just slip it out the back, you pretty easily win. 
Yeah, I'd like to get their insight on, on uh, when they bring that in and when they don't. But I think players are just finishing up sideboarding and they're shuffling up as we speak. Remember, they both get to look at each other's deck list in between each game and the start of each match. They get a couple minutes to do that. So no surprises from either of them. Mulligans mm -hmm. did play a part in the first game. Is it going to be in the second? Let's hope not. Let's hope for two nice keeps. Jones is going to be on the draw throughout this top eight, however long it lasts for him. Being our mm -hmm. eighth seed, sneaking in, I believe our only seven and two player to get into that top eight. Everyone else was X and one or better. If you had to, you know, hedge your bets here, is there a deck mm -hmm. that you think that's going to be more favored going into this game number two after Cyborg? I, I think it's still Bant Auras. It, things got better for Hunter. Uh, more so than they got better for Jones because, you know, Hunter just had some unplayable-ish four drops in the deck uh, and now got some cards that maybe can interact. But, you know, in theory, the Auras deck, if it if it hums, is just going to run over this Gruel deck. Um, but, you know, it's, the deck has to mulligan in a lot. It has a high fail rate. It's what I talked about before and why you don't see a ton of it. I love Hunter's Discipline here and just needing an elf. If you don't have it, just mulligan. Talk to me about this discipline. Because, you know, he, he spoke about it. He's clearly sticking to it. And it's clearly mm -hmm. getting him here, being undefeated so far today. About mm -hmm. the discipline of, of your game plan. You know, he mm -hmm. knows I want a turn one out. I'm going to, I'm willing to go down to five cards until I get that. How, mm -hmm. how hard is that to learn as a player? It can be hard. It feels bad. You might mulligan hit no lands, you might hit all lands, right? But think of it this way. If you were playing Bant Auras, you would not keep a hand that had no creature. And that's basically the same thing as Elf. Your deck is one to three with this rule mid-range deck. You have no two drops. You need to have that curve. Well, no one drop here for James, but we do have the one drop for Hunter into the a powerful free drop. Here comes the Huntsman. Ooh, pardon me. The Huntsman Redemption coming down, bringing along a free, free beast. How can we sell it over on Jones' side? Do we have a two drop? We do. We have got the uh, Light Pour coming down and again this one can kind of get out of hand if it doesn't get dealt with early it can really start turning and burning adding enchantments uh wrong yeah enchantments to it every single time you cast an aura onto it we're gonna sack the elf while we float one green now this this is where it can get pretty spicy right because we've got quite a few one ofs potentially in our sideboard and in our main deck that we can go and find anything off the top of your head you think you want to go and get here i mean uh, there's a lot of really good things uh I'm not exactly sure, but the Thrill Seeker did seem pretty good last time. I still think the Storm Seeker is also a pretty reasonable one, just giving all your creatures haste, initiate the race. Honestly, if we had a Bone Crusher Giant in our deck still, yeah, Ooh, there you go. That's the one I would want. Uh, but, you know, I wasn't sure we'd have it in or not, and I, we probably just do because we don't have enough cards to cut or to bring in, I should say. Sorry. And, uh-oh, another Light Pause here for Alex. And we will be able to equip an aura this turn, Will, which means we can then go search up Kaya's Ghost Form. So we're going to need two removal spells to remove it from the battlefield this turn and not have it attack on the next turn. Oh, that's the probably the best one we could have had as well in Feel Armor. So we get plus one, plus one for each enchantment you control, as well as First Strike, which really will slow down this beast on the other side if it does want to get turned sideways in a couple of future turns, because I think it's going to end up getting a big, nice plus two, plus two juicy bonus next turn. And we got the Thrill Seeker in hand that uh, we all know about because that is what was tooted up. Jones knows that, so he's going to you know, kind of fetch accordingly right now. Going through the math. Did it very well in game number one. Yep. And this is a big part of this, right? Like, making sure you're doing the right thing. I mentioned Kaya's Ghost Form as a snap answer. Your opponent only has so many answers. Maybe Kaya's isn't what you want. Yeah, and I think, like, Audacity is good because now your creatures are 3-3. Three, three. You're not going to be able to easily interact with There's probably no way they kept in a Crowen's War. Maybe one for this exact situation would be totally reasonable. But beyond that, you know, you're basically making your opponent draw one outer. And now you have a much bigger creature that can attack through these chunk blockers. Does that make it a 5 4 with first strike now? I believe so, yes. And trap. Uh, good measure. Oh, six. Yeah. It's six. It's a 6 4. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oof. Nice. Six, four, first strike trample. That is going to be able to stop a 5-5 uh, a five, five that we currently have on the battlefield of that beast. But obviously, Throw Seeker has to give uh, a bit of backup for two. Able to put two counters on one of these creatures and then uh, gains the kind of pseudo fling ability. Mm -hmm. Maybe we go about using that just to get another creature off the battlefield on the other side. We'll see how Hunter wants to go about it. Yeah, I kind of like the idea of just killing this light paw. I mentioned it's really hard to actually kill it. 
But, you know, I forgot for the Voldaren Thrill Seeker can actually go after creatures. I forgot it's fling proper and not just throw at the face, mm -hmm. uh, which a lot of these cards are. They don't typically let you do that. But here we are, and yeah, you know, not getting Kaya's Ghost for me. I thought at first it might have been a really heads up play, sort of putting him to the test, but he might have forgotten, like me, that Thrill Seeker doesn't do it. And when you play a deck like Ban Auras, you can't afford to have those sort of errors. Hunt just going through the motions in his head. Knows he's a game down. Knows he's in the top eight and first seed. It means, means he'll be on the play every single game he gets to, or every single match he gets to play in the top eight. So doesn't want to make any mistakes just now. Here comes the Thrill Seeker. Two counters are going to go on the Beast. Remember, it's got plus two, plus two as well from the uh, Saga in the graveyard. We're going to block. This is a 7-7 seven, seven Trampler. Versus a 6-4 Trampler. They're all going to go to the graveyard. Uh, oh, no. I think Alex forgot how big it was. You see him shaking his head there. I think he thought it was a straight yeah. up, like, I was going to just eat your thing and you're going to thrill seeker my thing. But, yeah, no, that is really uh, good for Hunter. I think Hunter was in a pretty good spot because Alex is just out of creatures. But now that we have this five power token left behind, we're going to clock Alex much quicker than the two by two, like on Noah's Ark, that would have been left behind. Are you calling it now? Are we calling it? Are we getting a game free? No, I, I'm not calling it yet because if Alex rips Glade Cover Scout and then you know hits like a staggering insight or something like that and just pops off on Ethereal Armors, then we can definitely race. But it is not an easy position to be in as we've used a lot of our best cards. We do draw a card because Audacity went to the graveyard. Yeah. The modern day Rancor. Oh man, I love that card. That is one of my favorite cards ever printed. Do you know the? Uh, I imagine your man of your caliber does know, but do you know the miss um, printing of that card? I do not know the misprint of that card. It was meant to cost two mana, oh. but when they when it went to print, they made the note that it was meant to cost two mana, but no one ch actually changed the card. So when it went to print, it was printed as a one mana enchantment instead of two. Gotcha. I thought you meant like an actual mention on the card. I do know that story. One of the greatest moments of all time, really. Tarmogoyf, very similar thing, copied over from one file to the other because uh, it got moved in sets. was supposed to be two and a green. Turned out to be one and a green because someone typoed. <laughs> I love it when these stories get leaked out to us. I mean, it's all right. It's, it's, it's so yeah. sick. Okay, yeah. this is the this is the the line that you were talking about. Glade cover scout into you know, giving it plus one plus one life link, and when it connects, draws a card. If we can make this big enough, the race is still uh, on. Should we say? <laughs> yeah, I mean, if we had the thrill armor, it would be really hard to attack. These mana confluences are really hurting us here, putting us to four. So audacity here, kind of funny. Both these creatures are one ones. Uh, so like, you know, they can't really attack through, oh, here's goes another Huntsman Redemption and the Bone Crusher Giant. So you're going to be able to start attacking next turn. But yeah, this turn, Alex did get a turn. If he could draw like Ethereal Armor where all that glitters, he could win this race still. That wasn't it. I think that was a light pause off the top. Now back into the tank. I think he has Curious Obsession in hand too. Yeah, that gives it plus one, plus one. But looking at the other side of the battlefield, that's one, two, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, ten, eleven. Plus, they can you, know, you can go get potentially anything from the deck. We two up another thrill seeker, another bone crusher. Going to be uh, it's going to be pretty hard for Alex, but let's have a little look. See, in the tank. Remember, two hundred and twenty-seven players started today. We are down to the final eight. Mm -hmm. Only one person gets to walk into the championship at the end of the year. 16 players are going to be battling out in that. We currently know eight of them. We're looking to find out who's going to be number nine. Yeah, we see Alex here doing some math. I think he's trying to see if I attack in and I hit... Oh, uh, I know what card's in Alex's hand. It's um, Alpha Authority, which is Enchant Creature has Hexproof and can't be blocked by more than one creature. So he can alpha authority to make it where it can only be solo blocked and then curious obsession. And he's seeing, is there a way for that to be eaten in combat? And if not, is that maybe what I need to do anyways? But we do see light paw is actually the final decision, which will trigger, I'm sorry, the light paw into curious obsession, which triggers the light paw. So are we just going on chump blocking G's with both of these? Okay, Love. that's like a, that's like a touche of solidarity. That's going to bring give it plus one, plus one, and vigilance. But more importantly, make a one-one white warrior creature that also has vigilance. So basically, chump blocker for everybody just tuning in. Mm -hmm. 
And I think with this attack, you basically have to eat the Glade Cover Scout, right? Because Glade Cover Scout's going to get like recursive cards. It's going to get bigger over time. So you have to kill it. It is, I believe, a 6-4, uh, or sorry, 6-3, which means right. the beast can trade with it. You will get to, the opponent will get to draw cards uh, and gain enough life that I think they're hoping that the Light Paws can then barely live through the next turn and just hope to run a runner because the audacity will fall off. They'll trample over a little bit because of that and get cards from the Curious Obsession and the Staggering Insight. Great play here from Alexander. We had a minor flub, but do you know what Hannah Montana says, Will? Whenever we make a mistake, everybody has those days. We have to keep going on. I did not know that. I'm more of a Swifty these days, more of a Swifty. Mm -hmm. Uh, seeing some crazy things happening this weekend. So combat damage is going to happen. Life is going to be gained going up to nine. Two cards drawn, because remember there's two enchantments that do draw cards when we connect to the face. Yeah, I'm surprised not to see the block here. I get that the beast attacks back for one less than the damage happened, but I was expecting that. This is a, you know a decision here that is tactical by Hunter, and one that might come back to cost him because if he doesn't win this turn, next turn that Glade Cover Scout's probably going to be much bigger and still have lifelink. So let's have a little. Is there any way that lethal can get done if we tutor up the perfects next turn? Well, you can grab Voldaren Thrill Seeker by sacking an elf again and floating a mana. Then you can put the counters on the Bone Crusher Giant. You just gained four life. Well, I think now that Alex tapped his mana, he might have died. He might have died either way. Because he, he was at three and gained six to nine, now go to eight. So you can give two plus counters on the giant, right? Uh, attack with everybody, have a mana up, uh, then throw the giant at Alex's face. That's going to put him to one, and then one of the creatures will get through. Uh, and I think that's game, because you also have a Darren Thrill Seeker, which can throw itself at face as well. But I might be having the math a little bit off. Our life totals seem to be a little different than I thought they were. We'll find out shortly as it all plays out. Yeah. I do think we're going to see a game number three here. And, you know, I'll just say it. This rule deck is very impressive. It's a deck that players often underestimate and underappreciate. Uh, I often you know hear from people how awful this deck is. And it top eights basically every RC. Uh, <laughs> consistently does well. Has a powerful, proactive game plan. And, you know, definitely has some flaws. You know, uh, I think it's kind of a worse mono green a lot of the time. But, you know, with this new build, it's kind of a different mono green. As we are seeing here, yeah, I can throw this one and just the little Darren Phil Seeker at you. Because yeah. Alex was at seven where I thought he was at eight. And that is my bad. Yep. Fling, fling. Come across. Nice and easy. Game number three. But this time, Jones does get to be on the play. It is open deck list. Both players are going to have one last look at each other's deck list before we get into that. And we get to do the same. So let's see if we can get them up on the screen for you all. Starting with Jones and this always list that has got him in it to eighth place so far. Mm -hmm. Now that we're on the play, would you change any of it up? Honestly, we, I saw slip out the... I, I think I saw... I'm sorry. I should say I thought I saw slip out the back at one point when we picked our deck up. Um... I'm still not a huge fan of those. And I think I just want to be doing my own proactive thing. There's going to be said about, you see your opponent keeps mulliganing the elves. You could bring in portable hole as a way to answer those elves, but it really only hits the elves. And you know that from the open deck list. Obviously it does hit beast tokens, but I think I err on the side of just, let's be doing our thing, get a rune of sustenance, rune of sustenance in our deck and just plow the opponent over. Go face, never trade. Sweet. Well, let's go across over to the gruel side. Let's have a little look at what Hunter's got here. Now on the draw, the elf is going to be even more important to try and you know get round that uh, that he'll be on the draw. Do we bring anything in here? Mm -hmm. So on the draw, we know it's a little bit different. You might want to have a you know more reactive things. Of course, you can catch up. However, I think what I said last time still holds true. The Crow War is really not that good. Maybe we might see that Hunter is going to put one Acro War in the deck after seeing how Light Paws can get out of hand, right? Potentially just a small oversight. And also, Unlicensed Hearse, not very good. So I can totally see just cutting three wars and one Hearse and just being like, listen, I have four disenchant effects between Thrilled Back, Cinder Vines, et cetera, and calling it a day on that and just being like, all right, time to hopefully blow up your enchantments and kill you. So we're going to see exactly how Hunter wants to do it. It seems like he's really valued 
uh, well, Darren Thrillseeker to get across those last couple points of damage with the Huntsman Redemption. And honestly, I'd argue hasn't even had his best draws in a lot of way, right? So who knows what's cap- what the deck is actually capable of. Yeah, it's, it's, it's super good. You know, especially once we uh, uh, saw Hunter in that game, I mean, he, he was able to almost just deal with both creatures on the other side straight away and was like, well, how do we get back into it? So everyone joins his side and you're like, well, it's got to start with a scout, it's got to go into this and almost managed to claw it back there in game number two. But we get, mm-hmm. get a game number three as both players have finished shuffling, sideboarding and to get a good look at that opening seven. Do we have a keep for Jones's side? Needs that some sort of hexproof creature and lands to cast it. A lot of enchantments to add to it. Does not like it. Hunter on the right of the screen. He wants that turn one up. Also doesn't like it. So both players dropping down to six. Who does this favor? I think this favors Hunter a little bit because his cards are pound for pound stronger. If Alex hits the both players highs, Alex, no matter what we do when we high roll, Alex is always going to win. Anytime we're not high rolling and we're sort of getting our average hands, Hunter is favored. I do want to say, saw a card in Hunter's hand. We did bring in the Gruel Charm, which is a way to get the creatures if an early boon, uh, Griff of the Boon is given. So, you know, Hunter does have a couple actual removal spells here. I also want to note both players kind of poker faced when they were mulliganing. And the moment they both mulligan, smiling, laughing, that's one of the things I love here in the energy series. People are here to play win. They, you know, they play to win, play seriously, but it's still a good time, you know not really any bad vibes going around of course they get to play the best game ever invented Mm -hmm. and they get to do it at a high level here at the nrg series as they have all made the top eight but do we have keeps for both places i think we've got the turn one scout but just not the man to cast it or is that we have have two secret coast i mean maybe there's someone hiding I think it's a temple guard. It might be uh, oh. the second or third card in there. Okay. I thought Alex was going to go for the, I believe in the dream for a second. You know, <laughs> the six well, cards, these are all really good if I draw a temple garden or whatever. Well, Under here. Really aggressively, I like said this discipline of his, like, I, I will have a turn one elf. I suppose this makes sense why we always see him with that turn one elf. Mm-hmm. There's uh, seven cards quick off the top, two cards going back. So I'm going to go out and let here and say we do have an elf uh, on turn one, but we are will be on the draw. And we're off to the races. Game number three. Turn one elf. Exactly how we wrote it out for James. Alex was like, I saw your turn one elf, so I like that. I figured I'd do my own. <laughs> they, look, they look pretty good. Can I win the game this way? Quarterfinals, remember, ladies and gentlemen, and after this, we'll be bringing you the semis, and the finals will be played tomorrow morning on this channel. So if you don't want to miss a thing, make sure you hit that follow button. Make sure you're following on all the different socials the NRG have as Curious Obsessions comes down. Connects, two points of damage, draw a new, another card, pass the turn. Okay. Over on yeah, the side. Alex has a lot of two mana enchantments in hand. So very lucky for Alex once again to be on the play draw moment here. If you can actually keep this hand and connect, imagine it's the other way around. Lovestruck Beast would have been in the way, would not be able to attack in. So, you know, Alex here benefiting from that play draw quite a bit, as you often do in Pioneer. Here is a big 5-5. Five, five. Can you fight your way through this? Hunter says. Here's this glittering coming down with a bunch oh. of enchantments. And here's the game plan of, oh, you want to block? No, no. I'm going to put an end to that, making it unblockable. We get to scry one when we attack, and then when we do connect, we will also get to draw a card. How big is this math? One, two, three, four, five? Five. Yep, you're on it. And that's yeah, as big man. as Lovestruck Beast with the uh, this card selection going here. You know, we scry, and then we get our card draw. And so Alex, you know, doesn't have any lifelink yet, so we are racing, but we are ahead on the race currently. Obviously, cards like Wildair and Thrillseeker can swap that in our instant. We're having a look. Remember, the, the molds are going to hurt. It hurt us game number one. Is it going to hurt us in game number... Uh, oh, maybe we're getting in there with the elf as well. I think that's what we were... I was like, oh, what? So let me touch our life pad once we, we tap the elf for mana. Here comes Burkos Giants. So we're working out a racing situation now on a hunter's side. Mm-hmm. Trying to get every, every point in... Ooh. And that's game. And, and, that's, yeah. and GG's. <laughs> I, you, we spoke about nut draws, one beating the other, and that is yeah. going to be the one that takes it down. Congratulations, Jones. Taking out Hunter, who's been absolutely undefeated all day long. Unfortunately, the second you get in that top eight, it's the second he picks up his first loss of the tournament. But can't be too unhappy with that. Going to get himself a bunch of points, a bunch of money, and obviously having an amazing day. But that means we're going to see that always list into the semi finals.
We've got a backup match for you. Mason's going to tell you what it is. We've got some spice. We, we know, know you, you're kind of sick of the Phoenix and Ragnarok. We've got you some spice. Don't worry about it. Sit back. What is it, Mason? Well, we have Ragnarok mid-range. <laughs> and actually, Rona Luka combo, which is actually a very exciting deck. So this is a deck that kind of broke out at the Archies two weeks ago. Basically, Piper's deck has Luka from Ixalan, which is you sack a creature and reveal a creature from your deck so you get one that has a higher mana value than the sacrifice creature. Every creature in the deck is a two-drop outside of Llanowar Elves. So you always hit Atraxa whenever you minus it. As we see here, it's the two Atraxas in hand. Very <laughs> awkward. Uh, you also see Piper kind of look away like, yeah, Duress not really hitting anything. The deck also has the Rona combo, which you might remember from when that came out in Phyrex I'm sorry, in March of the Machines. So that's going to be Retraction Helix, Mox Amber. All these cards work together. Atraxa helps find them. You have Kin and Bond and Prodigy, which can cheat in an Atraxa and give you a lot of extra mana. And all this is uh, able to happen thanks to Yorion giving you an incentive to have all these extra lands. Okay, Dreadboy is going to take out that Yorin, the big sky noodle. We're going to come across with this Goblin Shaman token, generate a treasure token for ourselves over on Jonathan's side. A bit scary that, you know, there's a couple of tracks in there, so we can't let the game go too late. So we do need to get those life points down to zero quick as possible. Land for the turn. Uh, okay, so we are shocking in that uh, Blood Crypt is going to play a Harvester with the Treasure Token adding a free two to our clock. What can we do on the right screen on Pyra's side? What sort of cards are we looking for? Yeah, I was trying to go that myself here. I'm kind of taking a look at the list here. I think that Piper really wants maybe something like well, the problem is with Luke is you don't actually find the combo. You can get Karn, and you have a bit of a Karn wishboard. There's not much that can really get you out of it this turn. We probably just need to keep the pressure off us long enough to assemble the combo vicariously. So Faye of Wishes is what Piper is going to start with, and let's see how she's going for. We know her hand is two Atraxes and an unknown from the draw step. Looks like Fatal pushes the grab here. And yeah, Piper agrees with just kind of playing a little bit of a longer game. I think that's to, to, to make sure that the elf sticks around because that could end up killing the elf, which means we're one more land away from being able to get this attracts on the battlefield. We've got a game plan. We know where we're going with it. We need to do everything we can to keep it going. Yeah. Jonathan, what can we do? Two cards, two free cards in hand. How do we want to move forward? Yeah, and you see him thinking there, going in the little tank. He kind of knows that those attractions are there. So the elf on board is going to be something that is going to be a problem. So, yeah, it looks like you're going to be using the blood to try and find a card that can matter here. Hive of the Eye Tyrant is the discard. Looking for, I imagine, double Fortsies is here, what we're trying to find here. But Bone <laughs> Crusher does the same. That takes one more turn off, uh, you know, and attracts to coming down. Do get a little bit more chip damage in with the Goblin Shaman. Get another treasure token. Now, how can we retaliate here? We know there's a couple of seven drops in hand. Never land. Hey, yeah. <laughs> John was like, can you just stop doing that, please? Please, please stop playing lands because we are only one land away from the big Phyrexian general hitting the battlefield, refilling the hand, and potentially refilling our life points if it does get to connect. Jonathan, big smile on his face there. Kind of uh, is crossing everything, hoping for the best. Yeah, one of those moments where a Piper's kind of like, what do you want from me? Do you want me to not draw a spell? Or do you want me to not draw a land? What's going on? And that's kind of one of the advantages of these slots here is that, you know, Jonathan didn't have the pressure, it seems, in the early game to put Piper on the big back foot. She knows it, and she's like, listen, I draw an untapped land. I'm going to slam this Atraxa, and you might have a kill spell for it, but it's going to refill my hand. I have another one, too. So Hobbs does not have the pressure he needs right now to actually end this game, and maybe he has to do something like play Bone Crusher Giant, activate Fable, and just attack for six. We've uh, looking at the deck list because it is open deck list and we both mm -hmm. uh, have access to that. One dread boar in the main, and we've already seen that fired off. So that is not good news if an attraction does come down. Yeah, only the go for the throats left. Is that right? Was there... Uh, there is one powered kill, one mm -hmm. act of a uh, heartless act. Mm -hmm. uh, that's our removal suite that can deal with it. Rough. Yeah. Anyway. Maybe a land away from it. Maybe multiple land away from it. We'll find out shortly. Adding to the battlefield. Well, okay, these are some good cards to add to the battlefield. How about Graveyard Trespasser, x that Elf from the Graveyard, a little bit of Life Swing, and Shield Dread. But now we are empty-handed. Do you have the land? Piper had a face that does not look like someone who drew an untapped land. Have to think. Not a good sign there. Oh, 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 it, uh, 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 
So it's the, are we going to get there? Oh, maybe this is a shock land, and she's thinking about how I might actually just die to damage. Uh, oh, yeah. So we, what, we drop to six. We drop to five. We go block, block. We take one, two. No, yeah, we, 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 we were just dead on board of that if we play that. Oh, no, I suppose. No, we're not dead on board because we were getting seven from the Atraxa. Yeah. Oh, it, it is oh. Tap, botanical saying, yeah, it was a tap yeah. land. Good bit of slow roll there. Maybe thinking about what we could do with the Fae there, but you can't pick up anything with the Fae, which actually win. And that is going to do it. And, you know, like we talked about beforehand, uh, that matchup is going to be one that's kind of weird. Players are still figuring it out. But Rakdos, you know, doesn't really have situations where it draws a Traxa, and that other deck does. And, you know, while it might be favored if it does its thing, sometimes you don't get to do your thing. But still a great finish there from Piper Pal, who just, I think, has like a 95 conversion rate when it comes to topping energy. So you're, you're, you're not so saying bad. that. You're saying yeah. every, every time things she comes to, she ends up top eight, in, and this is yeah. another one of those events. And if those lands were just in a different order, if we had we drew the tap land, then drew the end tap land, potentially a whole completely different game or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, unfortunately, not managing to get into the finals this time around. But that is going to be it for our two quarterfinals. We're going to have a short little break before we come back to the semifinals and we'll find out which four players are going to be battling out to try and get themselves the title of champion this weekend. So make sure you don't go anywhere. Stick around. We'll see you shortly. <laughs> 